Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial, we're going to be doing the second part of the time system. The first part is from some random dude. If you haven't seen his video on how to do this, I'm going to put a link right up here for you to click on. And uh, if you uh, have done it, let's continue on. So I'm going to rush through the time system because he does all of this in his in-depth tutorial. So the only thing that I've changed is this conditional branch. So basically we've set up a, a common event, called it time system, created a parallel, or made the trigger parallel process. We made a switch for it, for uh, calling a time start. Uh, we've set the first thing to wait 60 frames, control variables plus uh, one, plus one. We're gonna make three variables, minutes, hours, and days. Uh, then we do a conditional branch. The only thing I've changed in this one <clears throat> is the minutes instead of equal to 60 greater than equal to 60 the reason why we're making this greater than or equal to 60 because in, just in case something weird or funny happens on older computers where uh, 60 frames lags you lag for 60 frames if minutes if the minutes uh, variable goes past 60 then your clock is broken so uh, we're gonna have it greater than or equal to 60 that's a fail safe um, it shouldn't uh, matter if it says equal then or 60 uh, equal than or greater than equal to 60, but just for a fail safe, we're going to do greater than or equal to 60. Then uh, the control variables are going to be hours plus one, and then the minutes are going to be set to zero. Now, I, like I said, I'm rushing through this because this is all uh, material that's being covered in uh, some random dude's video, so go check him out if you want an in depth tutorial. Then we're saying if hours is 24, then we're controlling the variables days plus one and setting hours to zero. That's going to create our time system. So here's for my tutorial. We're going to be making a clock, and we're going to be making a day-night, uh, like a, a tent screen shading thing. So for the clock, we're going to basically make another common event, and we're going to right-click, right, right -click, insert text, and the text is basically going to call on variables. So those three variables that you made for the hours, the minutes, and the days uh, are going to be called on right here. Now for you, this will be different. This number uh, right here, 25, is the, the variable that stores your days. Now, for you, you're going to have to look at where you put the variable for days. Uh, the 24 I'm using for hours. Now, you're going to have to look at where you're storing your variable for hours. And how you would do that <clears throat> is just by going to Control Variables and uh, looking at where you put them. You see, I put hours on 24, days on 25, and uh, minutes for 23. So wherever you put them, you're just going to reference those numbers and uh, change those, change this exact uh, verbatim text to your number for days, your number for hours, and your number for minutes. Then we're going to say <clears throat> we're using this uh, this text code forward slash v uh, bracket and then the number of the variable and then closing bracket, and that's going to show the variable that's stored in that uh, the number that's stored in that variable. Uh, for default, they're all set to zero, but you're going to see when we start the game uh, that it's going to start adding up. So basically, you can have the clock read, uh, the, the text read however you want. I've chose the clock reads, and then I show the days, the hours, and the minutes, and then it also th sh uh, shows an optional zero days have passed, zero hours passed in this day, and it's zero minutes past the hour. So you can copy that however you like. And that's pretty much it for the common event for the clock. So then all we have to do is make a clock. So I've made an item called some random clock. And we're going to just give a quick description. Use this to tell the time. We're setting it to a key item. And it's not going to be consumable. Otherwise, it would just, uh, when you check the time, it would disappear. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to make the occasion menu screen only. That way we don't waste a turn in battle for no reason. Uh, where the, the invocation doesn't matter. The damage you won't need any. But the effects... You're going to need to call on a common event. You're going to go over to other, go down to common event. You're going to call on the clock item, common event that we just uh, created. So now that we've got our common event for the clock, we've got our time system common event, thanks to some random dude's video. Uh, and we've got our uh, item that's calling on the common event. We're done with the database. So now we're going to basically create uh, a, a parallel process that's basically going to tint the screen if it's nighttime and uh, brighten the screen uh, if it's daytime. So we're going to need two common or two parallel process events. Actually, one will be an auto run. So you're going to make an auto run event, new event. Now you're going to put this at, at whatever map your uh, character is going to be starting on the first, the very first map where they're spawned into the world. And you're going to set this to auto run, and then you're going to say 
control switches, you're going to turn that time start uh, ver uh, switch on. And once again, the reason why we're using the that uh, what we're using that for is to start our time system. You can see this switch. It's going to turn once this switch is on. It's going to run this parallel process common event that's starting our time. So this common event is going to be ran starting to run as soon as we turn that switch on. That's why we want it to be right on the first map. So we've turned that switch on. The time is now starting, <clears throat> but we need to is initialize our variables. So we're going to control variables minutes. We're going to set it to zero. We're going to control our variables hours. We're going to set it to whatever you like. I'll probably set it to, um, I guess we'll set it to like eight. Um, that'll be like it's eight in the morning. And then for the days, we're going to set it on one because it's the first day. Or you can, uh, alternatively, you can set this to zero. It doesn't really matter too much. It just depends on, do you want this to be day zero in your game or do you want this to be day one in your game? So we'll set this to one just to signify that it's the first day. Then we're going to control a self switch. So we're going to right click, insert new, control self switch, turn self switch A on. Then we're going to create a new event page. And then for this page, we're going to have an action button below characters and self switch A is on. So basically nothing's going to happen with this. Once it controls the variables, turns on the switch, this event is done. If you don't do the self switch, auto run will freeze your character and you won't be able to progress. So make sure you self switch A, new page that has nothing. Now this trigger can't be auto run. You have it action button and then below character. So if you have it same as characters and you have it on the map somewhere, it'll act as a collision. So you don't want your, your characters to have an invisible wall. So below characters action button, we hit OK. So that's the first event that you're going to have on just the first map. Now this, uh, this parallel process you're going to have on every map that's not inside a dungeon or inside a cave. Uh, any outside map, you're going to want to copy paste this. But it's really easy. So the first thing you're going to do is create a new event, give it a trigger, a parallel process. You're going to put it below characters. Uh, no image is required. You're going to first thing you're going to do is start off with a conditional branch. So you're going to go uh, right click, insert new conditional branch, and in in that conditional branch, we're going to call on the hours. So we're going to say if the hours are greater than or equal to 16, uh, then do this. We're also going to check create an else branch because we're going to have eight hours of darkness. In our, in our game for every day. I figured instead of 12 and 12, we'll do eight hours of darkness just because sometimes it's nice to have a bright, you know, really bright screen. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like when the screen is too dark, it gets, uh, it could be a, a detractor to your game. So uh, having eight hours of darkness and then 16 hours of light seems to be a better way to do this. So we're gonna say if hours is greater than or equal to 16, then this is basically saying, that it's past four o'clock uh, in on the, in your time in your game. Then we're going to tint the screen. Uh, so we're going to insert new. I'll show you where that's at. Right click underneath the first if. Uh, insert new. Where is it at? Uh, on the second tab, screen tint screen. So we're going to click on tint screen, <clears throat> and we're going to basically use a preset. Now you can ch uh, change this to however you like. I've gone with uh, nighttime. The preset nighttime. Now this has sort of a blue hue. So if this uh, if this it seems like it's too much blue for you, you can drag that back down to make it more of a dark. You could also make it darker like that, but um, then it might be too dark on some screens. So we're going to have it set to 360 frames just so it gradually gets dark, not does it instantly. But you want to make sure you uncheck wait for completion, otherwise it's going to freeze your game for 360 frames every time it goes day and night. On the else handler, we're going to say if it's not past 16, uh, the hours, it's not past 4 o'clock, then we're going to say tint the screen back to normal. So we're just going to click on normal, uh, uncheck wait for completion, and say 360 frames. Now you can change this number. It's up to you. And that's basically it. You're going to make sure this is set to a, a parallel trigger, and you're going to hit OK. So basically you would copy this, and you would paste this, say like on your world map, uh, or any other outside map that you would want it to be on. <clears throat> for my case, I usually put... As a general practice, when you start having a lot of events that need to run as parallel process um, or uh, auto run, you might want to put them all in the same location. If you have a giant, you know, a giant world map that you've made, you you may have like some here and some down here and some over here. And when you need to edit them and see what's causing your game to freeze or something, you might end up jumping around your map constantly. So as a general good uh, practice, it's good to put them all in the same spot. Uh, that way you can go to them and check them all quickly. So we're going to go up to here where I have some other parallel process events, and we're going to just paste it right there. 
So now uh, we're going to have, uh, when we get to this world map, it's going to also check the clock, and it's going to tint the screen if it's nighttime, and it's going to uh, tint the screen back to normal if it's daytime. So let's have a look at this clock in action. So we have our uh, auto run event that's right here and it's invisible. It's uh, not a collision. We could normally put it up here so just in case it's out of the way. But it's not going to do anything. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Forgot to turn off encounters. It's okay. We'll take care of this slime in no time. Oh, okay. The variables weren't being declared so that's a problem. <clears throat> I have my variables being declared on an opening sequence, which I bypassed in this one. And then we also have our other uh, parallel process event right here. So in this chest, I've got some random clock. And we're going to run it. And it's going to tell us what time it is. So one days have passed since we set the variable days to one. Eight hours have passed in this day because we've set the variable to eight. And then it's eight minutes past the hour because eight seconds have passed in the game. So basically, every 60 frames, it's basically saying every second uh, in real in the real world time, one minute is going to pass in the game time. So if we, did we were to check the clock again, it should read past that time. So now it's saying 29 minutes past the hour. And when this uh, when the hours go past, let's go to debug real quick. And we're going to go down to our variables, and we're going to change the the hours from eight. To 15 okay so now it should get dark because it's about to, it's probably about for the minutes to go to 60 which in case it goes back to zero but it adds one to the hours so when uh, the hours go to 16 it's gonna get darker so we could check our clock real quick and see how many minutes it is okay so it's 15 minutes past the hour 50 minutes have passed in the hour so any second now the screen should be tinting And as you see, the screen is getting darker, over 360 frames. So now it's technically nighttime. So we can debug uh, in order to uh, save time and not wait around for several minutes. We've uh, changed the hours. So if we were to take this back down to whatever, any number under 16, it should tint the screen back because it's daytime. And you can see that the screen is lightening back up over those 360 frames. And because we don't have wait for completion check, we're able to uh, move around still while the, the, the day and the night cycle is going. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Make sure you go check out some random dude and uh, subscribe to his channel. <clears throat> like, favorite, share, subscribe if you like this uh, sort of content, if you like this tutorial. Um, remember to keep asking your questions in the comments below. I really appreciate every one of you guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.